it's 10 a.m. by the studio clock. You're watching Breakfast News on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Tina Jha and these are the headlines this Monday morning. United Nations vows fresh sanctions against North Korea a day after it launched a long-range rocket. Pyongyang says it fired the rocket to place a satellite in orbit. Prime Minister Narendra Modi cites seaborne terror and piracy as threat to maritime security. In his address at the International Fleet Review, says Indian Ocean region one of the foremost policy priorities of his government. Delhi government decides to recommend CBI probe into the death of six-year-old student at a city school last week. Parents allege shortcomings in the current police probe, right to Union HRD minister. External Affairs Minister Sushma Suraj assures families of hostages. Two Arab countries have confirmed that 39 Indian workers abducted by Islamic State in Iraq are alive, says government doing all it can to rescue them. And after months of strain in relations, Nepalese Prime Minister to visit India first on the 19th of February, visiting Nepalese Finance Minister informed Sushma Swaraj, says his government is engaged in intense dialogue with the Madhesis to resolve the crisis. And the top story this morning, for the first time since turning approval in the 2611 case, Pakistani America Lashkar e Taiba operative David Headley is deposing before a court in Mumbai through video conference. In his deposition, Headley told the court that his contact in the Lashkar e Taiba was Sajid Mir, who is also an accused in the case. He also told the court that he came to India seven times before the Mumbai terror attacks and once after the attack. Headley also said that he changed his name from Dawood Gilani to David Headley in 2006 so that he could enter India easily and set up some business here. The deposition is important as it may further unravel the conspiracy behind the brazen terror strike. The court had on the 5th, 10th of December 2015 made Headley an approver and directed him to depose before the court today. Headley is currently serving 35 years prison sentence in the United States for his role in the Mumbai terror attacks. And shifting focus to the big international story, the United Nations Security Council has vowed fresh sanctions against North Korea a day after it launched a long-range rocket. However, Pyongyang said it fired the rocket to place a satellite in orbit. The launch took place even as the international community is still struggling to reach consensus on how to respond to Pyongyang's detonation of what it claimed was a hydrogen bomb last month. Here's more on this report. The members of the Security Council strongly condemn this launch. The UN Security Council condemning North Korea's latest rocket launch as they vowed to take stringent measures in response to Pyongyang's violation of the UN resolutions, one among them fresh sanctions against North Korea. The rocket launch on Sunday drew condemnation from other countries including South Korea, Japan and the United States saying it was a violation of UN Security Council resolutions. Pyongyang claims it launched what it called a peaceful Earth observation satellite. But nobody is fooled. So-called space launch vehicles are the same technology as ballistic missiles, which are expressly prohibited by multiple Security Council resolutions. I think this outrage uh, is based on the fact that uh, uh, this is, whether you call it the satellite launch, uh, this is the uh, uh, clear uh, preparation for the uh, missile, uh, the long-range uh, missile itself, and it is a clear violation of the past uh, Security Council resolutions. South Korea, along with the U.S., would soon begin discussion on deploying an advanced missile defense system to counter the growing threat of North Korea's weapon capabilities. 증대하는 북한의 위협에 대응하기 위해 한미 동맹의 미사일 방어 태세를 향상시키는 조치로서 주한미군의 사드 배치 가능성에 대한 North Korea defended the rocket launch saying it fired the rocket to place a satellite in orbit. Koreans welcomed the launch. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un reportedly said more satellite launches were planned for the future. 
안목은 늘어 싸울 수 있는 이런 그 정말 이런 박수 강제 이거 대학생들 이런 장수가 아니고 학습을 도울 수 있어서 내 나라 대중을 첫단 박수 정말 전원 높은 백수한되고 주최 강국에서 살고 있는 흔한큰 민족도 공자 자부심을 다시 한번 가슴 뜨겁게 느끼게 하는 뉴스 상고라고 생각합니다. The launch comes a month after North Korea conducted its fourth nuclear test. Although experts are skeptical of Pyongyang's claim that the test involved a powerful hydrogen bomb, under Kim Jong Un, North Korea has stepped up attempts to build long-range missiles and warheads, claiming that it has the right to develop a nuclear deterrent in the face of U.S. hostility towards the regime. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And back home, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has underlined that seaborne terror and piracy are the biggest threats to maritime security. Speaking at the International Fleet Review in Vishakhapatnam, Modi also pitched for respecting freedom on navigation. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that the threat of seaborne terror and piracy are two key challenges to maritime security. The threat of seaborne terror of which India had been a direct victim continues to endanger the regional and global peace and stability. Piracy too remains a strong challenge. Addressing the valedictory function of the International Fleet Review in Vishakhapatnam on Sunday, the Prime Minister, in an apparent reference to the audacious 2611 Mumbai terror attacks, said that seaborne terror continues to endanger regional and global peace and stability. Modi also pitched for respecting freedom of navigation against the backdrop of the South China Sea dispute. The Prime Minister said that the Indian Ocean region was one of the foremost policy priorities of his government. The Indian Ocean region is one of my foremost policy priorities. Our approach is evident in our vision of Sagar, which means Ocean and stands for security and growth for all in the region. We will continue to actively pursue and promote our geopolitical strategy and economic interests on the seas, in particular the Indian Ocean. Modi, along with Defence Minister Manohar Parikar and Chief of Naval Staff Admiral R. K. Dhawan, witnessed the operational demonstrations showcasing the multidimensional operational tasks undertaken by the various arms of the Navy. Referring to his government's ambitious Make in India initiative, Modi said 37 of the Indian warships participating in the fleet review were made in India and their numbers will surely rise. He also said the nation's ability to reap economic benefits from the oceans rested on our capacity to respond to challenges in the maritime domain. The Prime Minister also informed that India will be hosting the first ever global maritime summit in April this year. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, the Prime Minister also went to Odisha yesterday where he dedicated IOCL's Paradip refinery project to the nation. He also inaugurated the National Institute of Science, Education and Research on the outskirts of the state. Later, he also visited Puri to pay his obeisance to Lord Jagannath. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Sunday inaugurated the Indian Oil Corps refinery in Paradeep and dedicated it to the nation. The 15 million tons per annum Paradeep refinery was built over nearly 16 years. The foundation stone of the ninth plant of the IOC was laid by former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee in May 2000. Blaming Congress for delay in implementation of plans and policies, Modi said his government is trying to bring a culture of completing projects well in time. Innovation. Earlier, Prime Minister also inaugurated the National Institute of Science, Education and Research near Bhuvneshwar. He said innovation was the need of the hour for every society. Modi, however, urged the students to innovate things which were affordable to one and all. <laughs> Yeah, affordable. 
सस्टेनेबल हो और मेरा हमेशा आग्रह रहता है जीरो इफेक्ट जीरो डिफेक्ट The Prime Minister also visited the Lord Jagannath Temple at Puri on Sunday. This was Modi's second visit to Odisha after assuming office in May 2014. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV. Meanwhile, the Congress party has reacted sharply to the Prime Minister's remark blaming the party for non-completion of projects in Odisha. The party has blamed the erstwhile NDA government instead. The Prime Minister had said that he would have been happy if the IOCL's Paradip refinery had been completed 15 years ago. The Congress has said that the Prime Minister is either misinformed or not informed at all, as 15 years ago the NDA was in power at the centre. The party also took exception to the Prime Minister's comment that the UPA government has often failed to complete projects within the stipulated time, saying that the NDA has no history of successfully completing a project across the country. The Prime Minister's remarks came while he dedicated the IOCL's largest greenfield refinery at Paradip to the country. The Congress has also questioned why nothing has been announced for people affected because of the refinery. The Prime Minister has also not responded to Chief Minister Naveen Patnaik's demand for a special category status for Odisha. And in some good news, External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj on Sunday said that 39 Indians who were taken hostage by the Islamic State more than one and a half years ago in Iraq were alive. Swaraj, who sought a meeting with the families of the hostages, also assured them that the government was fully and continuously engaged and every possible effort was being made to ensure their safe release. The 39 Indians taken hostage by IS more than one and a half years ago from Mosul in Iraq are still alive. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj informed this to the families of hostages in New Delhi on Sunday. Sushma said the confirmation came when she attended the first Indo-Arab ministerial meeting in Bahrain last month. सबके सबने ये कहा कि हम उनको छुड़ाने के लिए तैयार हैं और दोनों तो सीधे सीधे ये बताया कि वो जिंदा हैं सुषमा who was meeting the families of the hostages for the ninth time since their abduction said the government was continuing its efforts to rescue them she added that 15 countries that constitute the league of arab state had promised to help secure their release as soon as possible पहले परोक्ष रूप से मुझे पता चला था अब प्रत्यक्ष रूप से पता चला है और पूरे अरब वर्ल्ड ने हमारा साथ दिया है इस पर ये कहते हुए कि वो उनको जल्दी छुड़ाने का प्रयास करेंगे फैमिलीज ऑफ द हॉस्टेजेस मोस्ट ऑफ होम आर फ्रॉम पंजाब सेड दे वर ईगरली वेटिंग फॉर द रिटर्न ऑफ देयर लव्ड वंस आज का विदेश मंत्री जी द्वारा थोड़ा सा ये बताना कि ये पुख्ता सबूत हैं मैं समझता हूं कि परिवार को कहीं ना कहीं थोड़ी सी हौसला अफजाई हुई है लेकिन जब तक वो बच्चे वापस नहीं आते तब तक ये सारी बातें जो हैं केवल और केवल हौसले के बराबर हैं उससे ज्यादा कुछ नहीं द इंडियंस वर्क किडनेप्ड बाय इस्लामिक स्टेट मिलिटेंट ग्रुप फ्रॉम अ कंस्ट्रक्शन साइट इन मजूल इन जून ट्वेंटी ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्यसभा टीवी and there's also good news with regard to the India Nepal relationship. After months of strain and ties, the Nepal's Prime Minister KP Sharma Oli will be visiting India first on the 19th of February. This will be his first foreign trip after assuming office. This development comes in the backdrop of months of strained bilateral relations, as we told you earlier. Nepal's Finance Minister Bishnu Podel, who's on a two day visit to India, met External Affairs Minister Sushma Suraj on Sunday. Suraj conveyed to him that India was looking forward to Oli's visit as it could further strengthen the bilateral ties. PTI court sources are saying that Oli is scheduled to hold comprehensive talks with Prime Minister Narendra Modi on the 20th of February on key regional as well as bilateral issues. Nepalese Finance Minister will meet his Indian counterpart Arun Jaitley today. Meanwhile, the Indo-Nepal joint military exercise will commence in Pithoragarh. In the exercise named Surya Kiran, an infantry battalion of the Indian Army and an equivalent strength from the Nepalese Army would be sharing their experiences gained during the conduct of counter-insurgency operations and the jungle warfare in mountainous terrain. Time for a very short break here, but all the international news and some more national news to follow on the other side. Don't go anywhere. India's biggest newsmakers, opinion makers of the day. I had uh, two questions. India, we all know we have been having a... The focus is really on highways. They are not stepping out and say that we will do it. Indirect interaction.
you can donate i but you cannot donate vision the lack of the vision is a important problem in the country rstv takes television programming to a whole new level watch transport minister nitin gadkari in full flow on spotlight on rajya sabha television Thanks for staying with us on Breakfast News. Now, the Delhi government has decided to recommend a CBI probe into the death of a six-year-old student at a city school last week. This after parents of the child alleged shortcomings in the current police probe, also hinting at a possible sexual assault of their child. They even wrote to the union HRD minister Smriti Irani seeking her intervention in the case. A copy of that letter was also sent to the prime minister's office. Soon after the aggrieved parents of 6-year-old Devanj wrote to HRD minister Smriti Irani seeking a CBI probe into their son's death the Delhi government announced it would recommend a probe by the top investigating agency Devanj parents allege their son was sexually assaulted before his death as they claim to have found injury marks on his private parts the 6-year-old's body was found in a reservoir at his school Rayan International in Vasant Kunj सीबीआई को सौंपने की रिकमेंडेशन तो हम भेजेंगे यहाँ से दिल्ली सरकार से तुरंत भेजेंगे और हम उम्मीद करेंगे कि ये सीबीआई की जांच में बेहतर तरीके से जिस बात की ओर इशारा दिव्यांश के माता पिता कर रहे हैं या बाकी और लोग कर रहे हैं जिन्होंने एसडीएम की रिपोर्ट में अपने बयान दिए हैं उन सबसे सीबीआई ठीक से पूछताछ करके और इस मामले को एक जो लॉजिकल एंड है उस तक लेके जाएगी Devanj's father claims the police have not been cooperating with them and not taking the probe in the right direction. बच्चा वहाँ जा ही नहीं सकता उसको कोई भी लेके गया है और लेके क्यों जाएगा ये सब तो फिर जांच बताएगी कि हम तो हमारी आशंकाएं जो हमें लगता है कि ऐसा हो सकता है ऐसा हो सकता है वही हम आपको बता रहे हैं वही हमने पुलिस को बताया लेकिन पुलिस ने तो उस एंगल को देखा ही नहीं पुलिस ने तो सिर्फ लापरवाही का मामला दर्ज करके और अरेस्ट किए रिया कर दिए Amid serious allegations by Devanj parents, political pressure is also mounting on the Delhi government to look into the shortcomings in the ongoing probe. The child's parents are very important to their satisfaction. And what the lack of there is, they should come in front of people. And the people who are asking for the government, they should work on the government. The parents and the mother of the child अगर सीबीआई मांग की जांच कर रहे हैं तो क्यों नहीं वो जांच हो क्योंकि एक आखिर एक मासूम बच्चे को उन्होंने खोया है और उनकी जो भी शंकाएं हैं वो दूर करना अति आवश्यक है और साथ ही जांच सीबीआई की जांच या कोई भी ट्रांसपेरेंट जांच जिससे कि ये पता लग कारण पता लगा सके और फिर उन कारणों के लिए कौन दोषी है उनको सजा हो ये बहुत जरूरी है Initial investigations into the case have led the police to alleged negligence of the school management. The police also claim that the school does not have a completion certificate despite functioning for over 20 years now. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV. Moving on to Bengaluru now where a private school had an unexpected visitor on Sunday, a leopard. The animal entered the school premises by scaling a compound wall and was caught on the school CCTV cameras. A security guard saw the leopard and raised the alarm. School authorities then immediately informed forest officials and also called the police, who rushed to the spot. After a day-long operation, the feline was tranquilized, but three people got injured in the process. One of them being renowned conservationist Sanjay Gubi, who was bit on his leg and arms by the leopard. Moving on to the weather front now, snowfall and rains in several areas of North India, including Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand, brought down mercury levels sharply on Sunday. Drizzle in some parts of the national capital led to a marginal fall in day temperatures, making the conditions pleasant for Delhiites. Shimla and its surrounding areas experienced the first heavy snowfall of the season, while tribal areas and other hills in Himachal Pradesh recorded continuous heavy snowfall. Shimla town received 18 centimeters of snow, while Kufri, Fagu, Narkanda, Kharapathar, Chopal, Haripurdhar and Noradhar received 20 to 35 centimeters of snow. The Hindustan-Tibet National Highway was blocked beyond Shimla due to heavy snow and hundreds of vehicles were stranded due to traffic jams caused by snow. 
Meanwhile, a few areas in the higher reaches of Jammu and Kashmir received light snowfall, even as there was improvement in night temperatures across the valley as well as the Ladakh region. मौसम है कल हम यहाँ आए थे तो ऐसा मौसम नहीं था धूप के लिए थी एकदम से मौसम अच्छा हो गया और काफ़ी अच्छा फील हो रहा है कुफरी जा रहे थे हम बेसिकली लेकिन शिमला में ही स्नोफॉल हो गया इट्स मतलब ओसम वे रेली ओसम तापमान अब वो सभी जगह मोस्ट ऑफ द प्लेसेस जो है शून्य से नीचे चल रहा है लगातार स्नोफॉल की वजह से तापमान में काफ़ी गिरावट आई है जैसे कि शिमला का कल दिन का तापमान उन्नीस डिग्री था आज जo तापमान है वो शून्य के आसपास चल रहा था A look now at some of the other developments slated for the day in our segment The Day Ahead. The Delhi government's plea challenging the Delhi High Court's order on its decision to ban management quota in nursery admissions will come up for hearing today. In an appeal before a bigger bench, the Directorate of Education has sought vacation of stay before arguing that the quota resulted in a lot of maladministration and it is duty bound to stop it. The appeal also asserts the Delhi government has full powers to redesign nursery admission norms since education falls under the state government's domain. Last week the high court stayed Aam Aadmi Party government's order scrapping management quota in nursery in private unaided schools saying the decision was taken without the authority of law. The 8th meeting of the special committee on interlinking of rivers will be held in New Delhi today. to review the progress of interlinking of rivers across the country union minister for water resources river development and ganga rejuvenation uma bharti will chair the meeting water resources ministers and senior officials from various states will also be attending the day long meeting the meet is expected to discuss issues such as status of ken betwa link project phase 1 and phase 2 status of daman ganga pinjab 1 and partapi narmada link projects intrastate link proposals and restructuring of the national water development agency a final decision on whether the firosha kotla stadium in delhi can host four matches of the world t20 tournament will be taken today delhi is scheduled to host four matches including a semi final of the biennial tournament starting from the 8th of march in india but uncertainty still haunts delhi and district cricket association as it is yet to obtain no objection certificates from the local civic authorities the situation resulted in the 12th february match of the india sri lanka bilateral t20 series being shifted out of kotla to ranchi in some other news now the un human rights chief has promised tamil leaders that he will raise the issue of over 4000 civilians missing during the civil war with the sri lankan leadership UN High Commissioner for Human Rights Zaid Ral Al Hussein traveled to war-torn northern province and met the leaders. He said charges against LTTE prisoners should be resolved through court. Hussein is in Sri Lanka on a four-day visit. This also happens to be his first visit to the island nation after succeeding Navi Pillai as UN Rights Chief to review measures taken by the government to investigate alleged war abuses during the war. Was met with protests from the relatives of the missing people in the north, the center of the civil war, which ended in 2009. According to UN figures, up to 100, uh, up to one lakh people were killed in the three-decade-long civil war. Hundreds of people are still missing. Meanwhile, anger is simmering in Taiwan over building falls after Saturday's earthquake killed at least 35 people in Tainan city. The death toll is further expected to go up as dozens of people a uh, dozens of people are still fear trapped inside rubbles rescue operations are still underway meanwhile officials have launched an investigation into the construction of the Taiwanese apartment complex that toppled in the 6.4 magnitude quake Tainan mayor said survivors and relatives had reported legal violations however he restrained from giving further details most people in Taiwan gathered uh, 针对有十几个人，好、啊，在进行救援。那、啊、这目前救援的，包括来自其他县市的特搜队，都来进行协助了。Let's now take a look at all the other international stories from across the globe. Tension is high in Haiti as President Michel Martelly has stepped down at the end of his term. No successor has been chosen yet as the opposition challenged a deal to select an interim leader. A runoff vote to elect his successor was also shelved because of fears of violence and allegations of fraud. In a speech Martelly said his biggest regret was that January's presidential election had been postponed. 
The United Nations Human Rights Chief Zayed Ral Al Hussein met families of Lankan war victims during his visit to the country on Sunday. He is on a four-day visit to Sri Lanka in which he assessed the country's progress in prosecuting alleged war crimes. Earlier, Lankan President Mathripala Sirisena had agreed to a UN resolution that called for post-war reconciliation and an investigation of all alleged war crimes. Turkey today delivered aid in the Syrian city of Aleppo as the war rages between the Syrian government and the opposition. Tens of thousands of Syrians have fled an escalating government assault on Aleppo. Meanwhile, the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, which monitors the war, said airstrikes thought to be from Russian planes hit villages north of Aleppo on Sunday. The Spanish police on Sunday arrested seven people with suspected links to Islamic State and other jihadist groups. Officials said the suspects provided logistical support for terrorist activities both in Iraq and Syria. The alleged leader of the cell was also asked by the Islamic State to supply women for militants in the two countries. Four of those arrested are Spanish nationals of Jordanian, Moroccan and Syrian origin, while the other two are Syrian and Moroccan citizens. Heading to some sports news now, India continued its domination for the second consecutive day at the 12th South Asian Games underway in Guwahati with swimmers, wrestlers and weightlifters fetching the bulk of gold medals. On Sunday, the swimmer scooped 10 medals, including four gold, five silver and one bronze. The wrestlers added four gold and a silver, while the weightlifters bagged three gold medals. Indian women's table tennis team won the gold, beating Pakistan, while the Indian women's hockey team defeated Nepal 24-0 in their group opener. Cycling and Bushu also got India a gold medal each, as many as five games record were created out of the seven events, with the Indians accounting for three of them. India at present is at the top of the medals tally with 30 gold, 12 silver and three bronze medals. Sri Lanka is second with eight gold, 18 silver and 14 bronze, while Pakistan is in the third place with two gold medals. In today's games, Indian men's hockey team will take on our rivals Pakistan in the group encounter. The men in blue beat Bangladesh 4-1 in their opening match on Sunday. In women's squash, top seed Joshna Chinappa will feature in the summit clash today. For all the other sports news, here's the sports beat. After two successive losses, India came back to earn a consolation win as they defeated Kazakhstan 2-0 in the Fed Cup asia Oceania Zone Group 1 5th 6th place playoff match. After Prerna Bhamri won the opening singles match, India's Don Saturday Ankita Raina outclassed Yaroslova Shvedova in straight sets for India's win. Earlier, India lost 1-2 to Japan and 0-3 to Thailand. In the world group, defending champions Czech Republic defeated Romania 3-2 to book their place in the Fed Cup semi-finals. Romania took a 2-1 lead, but the defending champions came back to win the reverse singles and the double style. The Czech Republic will now face Switzerland in the semi-finals, which will take place in April. In La Liga, Real Madrid kept their title hopes alive with a 2-1 win over Grenada. Karim Benzema opened the scoring for Los Blancos while Luka Modric scored a stunning late goal to keep Madrid in the third place. In another game, Barcelona beat Levante 2-0 to stay at the top. That's it from us in this bulletin. Thanks for your time.